Hey everybody, Courtney Smith here with our December 19th edition of Wall Street Winners. Let's dive right in here. So the market did exactly as I told you it would do, and it would, and it sold off exactly when I told you that it would. Now the question, of course, is what's going to happen next? Well, I think we're going to see some follow through on this. Some of our indicators turn more bearish, and I think that this is going to be one of those dips that's going to get everybody bared up again. That's right. Well, they're going to start saying, oh, the bear market's not over again. We're going to plunge to new lows. The recession is coming. The Fed is still tightening. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Which, of course, is perfect because early bull markets climb a wall of worry. And that's going to create that wall of worry that's going to cause the stock market to turn around in a week or two and start going back up again. Remember, you heard it here first. So here, let's go take a look in the upper left, upper right hand corner. Sorry, we did see selling pressure go above buying pressure. That's the little green line and little red line. So that's why we sold off. Let me go back to the previous one. Look at the heavy volume. Look at the heavy volume, but notice that we didn't close on the low. We closed in the middle of the range, so it was not as bearish a day as it looks at first glance. NASDAQ also breaking down as well, also closing in the middle, also heavy volume. So we have to respect this dip, but I think it's going to be short-lived, maybe a week or so. Our seasonality indicator never gave a bull signal never gave a bull signal. So we still are back here. So here's the little dip. The dip you can see right here. And it should be over in about, I would say probably this coming week, we should see the, re the seasonal strength start to reassert itself. So look for this dip to be short lived. Look for it to create tremendous panic in market participants, but look for it to end by the end of the week. Asset allocation, we saw some money flow out of the stock market and into the bond market. Once again, people are looking for safety. They're looking for safety. And of course, all bonds mature at 100. So we always know what price we're going to get when it matures. That is, if it does mature and doesn't default. But if it doesn't default, we know we're going to get 100. So that's a way of reducing risk is to go into bonds. Wasn't a big dive. The big dive was actually a couple of weeks prior to that. But this still is a little bit of a dive showing that money is flowing out of the stock market and into the bond market. Over here, we can also see our stock market risk decator drifted a little bit lower. No big deal. Uh, there's really this tension going on. Normally, what happens is we start to see small cap and value stocks start to rally and outperform relative to the whole stock market. And so we should start seeing that happening this week. All right. So that means IWM will outperform SPY, QQQ, DIA, and all the rest of the big indexes. The global shares also took a beating, but notice they solidly made new highs. So global shares are much stronger than U.S. shares uh, for the first time in years, quite frankly. Uh, inverted yield curve, nothing new here. Bonds, as I say, money went out of the bond, out of the stock market into the bond market. But there's a couple of things we have to break down here. First of all, it wasn't enough to make the bonds go to new highs. Hmm. But the purple predictor perked up a little bit. So on balance volume is showing that the smart money is buying a little bit of bonds. Dollar under pressure. I think it's going to stay under pressure, although we might have a little bit of a reflex dead cat bounce. And if that's the case, then gold will probably sell off a little bit over here over the near term. No big deal. I really have no gold positions, but I'm trying to get long gold here because I think it's going to do very, very well in 2023. But I'm not pushing. I'm not tr I'm not running to get into the gold market. I don't think there's any rush, but I think we're going to see 2000, 2200 later in the year. So we do want to get long gold here. And I think gold stocks more than gold. Our gold indicators remain basically neutral here with 111 on the left-hand side. 
crude oil. I'm bearish on crude oil. Um, it's just demand. I, I've been repeating myself. I feel like I'm repeating myself, but demand is declining for crude oil as the global economy moves into a recession. In addition, from a technical perspective, oops, uh, you can see that the purple predictor, which was way above crude oil here and it was a bullish feature, the smart money has sold crude oil faster than the market has, and that's bearish. They're giving up on the bull case. We were there first, of course, but nonetheless, now the smart money is seeing the market the way we see. Bitcoin, I'm just bearish on it. I think it's being manipulated and being held up here. Hence the fact that we have such strong support at 15,500 to 16,000. Um, I think we're going to see some massive selling of Bitcoin here as the Fed continues to tighten. It's taking liquidity out of the market. We was November, uh, early November, the capitulation in the market. I don't think so. Capitulations can look like this. Super heavy volume, super wide ranges. But after capitulation, the markets usually bounce straight back up again. They don't hover like this, which tells me somebody's buying this stuff. It's not the smart money. You can see that in the purple predictor. It's not smart money. So I have a feeling that it's some big player in the market is supporting uh, Bitcoin prices right now. Uh, we will see. I will continue to do research, but I believe it's being manipulated right now. All right, freebies, love having you here. You know what to do. Hey, everybody, Courtney Smith here, and I just wanted to kind of reveal with you one of my secrets of my success, and that is I use a website called stockbutler.com, stockbutler.com. And the reason I use it is because it saves me so much incredible time, and it was based on my forms of analysis. The Stock Butler was developed by one of my brilliant students. Of course, all my students are brilliant. You know that. And uh, he designed it around my technique for selecting, for fundamentally selecting stocks. So all you have to do is you come here, you go to rate, you go to best of the best. That's the name of the technique. And bingo, there's the list. And then since there's only four stocks there, no problem. Go up to rate, go down here to advanced stock list. I usually change this to main E table, update the list, <clears throat> anything in green, I'm interested in. Now, I know that these are fundamentally powerful stocks. Now, all I have to do is go find the correct technical entry and exit point. So, Stock Butler saves me a tremendous amount of time, keeps me focused on only the best of the best stocks instead of wasting my time on other garbage. All right, everybody. We'll see you later.